Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is Mervyn Damos. It's my face, to go with the voice. I'm in London. I'm here for a reason, so I'll explain why I'm in this creepy castle for a second here. Um, to catch people up, I'm visiting family over in London. <laughs> I'm not really able to play much Genshin, uh, but I'm trying to try a couple different formats of video. And, uh, well, this was one, so here is a selfie cam here. Um, so I'm walking around a uh, gothic castle, which apparently is inspiration for uh, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. What kind of inspiration? I don't know. I assume it's something, but that's what the blurb said. Look, I'm not an expert in this shit. But the point is, I'm here for a reason. I want to talk about a couple of things, uh, particularly a conspiracy theory that I've been rambling about for a while. Uh, and I'm going to link... Uh, in the video, video magic here in the corner, maybe over here. Uh, the first part of a story uh, that was originally kind of a joke, but is actually, the more I think about it, maybe, maybe right, maybe true, I don't know. But the thing that stuck in my mind was uh, this whole <laughs> Rue and Scaramouche story. And I'm gonna try and tie in a little bit of, uh, of Hu Tao into there also. And I'll try to explain how, oh, here's a cool chair even. I can sit in for a quick second here. So let me quick summarize the first part if you don't wanna watch it. Basically, the gist is the Rue is Scaramouche, okay? In some way, I don't know how. A rebirthed body based on him somehow. Here's a chair I was talking about. Look at the acoustics on this thing are probably pretty good, huh? Um. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about that real quick. So there's a couple of things that are undeniable. So the first thing, let's just go through like bullet points. Again, you want the longer version, watch the other video. But the timing of the story is interesting, right? Where you are chasing Scaramouche and then he disappears. And then you just pause the story and you go on to this weird island and meet a mysterious boy who kind of looks like Scaramouche. That's the dumb version, okay? There's more to it than that. So one, <laughs> what is this boy's deal? Well, he is a singer, okay? And that's important because there is code names for the Fatui and Scaramouche has one and it is called the Balladeer and his, <laughs> that means singer. And that's the main point of that first video, okay? That's a, it's a coincidence, okay, it's fine. All right, fine, okay. Okay, fine, just a coincidence. You keep going with the story and then you're met with a black screen that explains how the mist shows up on that island, right? And you think it's a thunderbird, right? You think it's that bird. You think it's like uh, the bird is mad or something, creates mist, and the mist causes all sorts of st like bad shit to happen. But they tell you in that black screen that it isn't. Oh, that's bright. I had back in the shade, I think. That it's not. <laughs> that it is not the thunderbird. No. It is, in fact, a meteorite that hits the ground and brings the mist. Now, meteorite could be anything, could mean anything. The Celestia is connected, okay, fine. But where did we first meet Scaramouche, if you remember? Now, this is where the conspiracy gets deeper. We first meet him, he's investigating meteorites. Okay, all right. That's two. That's two coincidences. It's getting deeper. How many coincidences can we write off? I don't know. All right, so let's talk about a couple more things. And now we, this is where we start to get a little bit more into like, my interest is like, I studied writing. I studied creative writing a little bit. And I think like, where would you go with the narrative? You bring in like symbolism, you bring in like, you know, motifs and stuff, okay? The first motif I want to talk about is uh, the three treasures of Japan. There's a sword. There's a mirror and there's a jewel, okay? Now, Rue mentions the importance of the rules of threes. Now, that might be a coincidence, I don't know. But it seems pretty clear that they are referencing these treasures in the story. The sword, clearly the sword of like, of Raiden, Shogun, right? The mirror is more interesting. People have made the connection, not me, just someone else has made a connection, that it looks like the underside of Scaramouche's hat. Makes sense to me. 
I don't see why not. Okay. Well, then what's the third? What's the jewel? If you look at a picture of the, of the jewel, I'll pop that more movie magic. I'll pop an image of the, of the jewel on the screen. It looks like a crescent sort of shape, a weird, like a half a yin yang, right? Well, we got an item that has some spiritual power invested in it. And it kind of looks like that shape. I'm talking about the pinion. Now I'm gonna put a picture of that up now too. Now the pinion is interesting because remember the pinion has Rue's spirit in it. Okay. So now we've got a few connections going on here. Okay. Now we haven't tied Rue to Scaramouche. Now we do know that Rue is the, the boy sacrificed in the lore to the Thunderbird. Like we know he exists in the lore. Okay. I'm not trying to dispute that. But we also know Scaramouche exists in the lore. Okay. So now we have them tied to artifact sets. Is there a connection? So we need, right? What's the connection between Rue and Scaramouche? And there is a connection, possibly. And that's the Thunderbird himself. Now, hear me out. This is where it starts to get a little bit off the deep end. It starts to get a little bit... you got to take liberties with, like, anime tropes and fantasy stuff. But, all right, so hear me out. So what if, what if, Raiden knew that she would need to take on the, uh, the foe once again, right? Like take on that that Thunderbird again. We know that Rue has some magic powers. We know that he can soothe the beast, that he can soothe the, the bird, and we do that in a story quest. That might give her a reason to try to save that boy. I don't know, they could write this in in the future, okay? The point is, she then kills the Thunderbird Right? So the Thunderbird goes on a rampage for like the death of Rue and then she kills the Thunderbird and then she coincidentally also creates a kid. Now a lot of people say well like the kid doesn't look like Rue or whatever. Well, okay. Scary much doesn't look like Raiden Shogun either. So why would you make a boy look randomly like some random ass boy? Okay? To me it seems like maybe you need a model to go off of or essence or spirit to build from. All right, we don't know the science of how she makes Scaramouche. We don't know the science of that. So it's my belief that this is all gonna kind of play in. So now we're gonna like project forward a little bit here, okay? And why, I mentioned Hu Tao in the beginning. I am coming back to that, okay? So there's a lot of things that are coming through here, right? Where we now have potentially a puppet and there's actually new lore in the uh, new artifact set, which is a leak technically, close your ears if you care. But they mention that, that there's a, you know, it, it, that there's a, a vagrant, an eccentric vagrant in this mansion, and this artifact set mentions it, and the set is called the Husk of Opulence or something like that. The, the point is that it references a husk. And if you talk about a husk, and now is what we're at the Frankenstein place, okay? It's a go body without a soul inside of it. Now, weird. If we we have an item with soul in it. We have a body without a soul in it that kind of looks like the soul that could go in it, according to my conspiracy theory. Uh, and now we're also, right, dealing with Hu Tao. Now, let's say you were going to have a cameo from a character. Who would you ask and bring in? Now, Child's Banner came out before he was in the story again, right, with this whole new event, right? Maybe we got an upcoming cameo from Hu Tao. Maybe we need some help on reanimating a dead body. Maybe we got questions about that. How would you put a soul into a dead body. Uh, and there's another character who might actually ask about that too. And that's Albedo, right? <laughs> He's a non molecule. So we kind of got a pair of two characters that might fit in with the theme about a husk or a Frankenstein's monster. Now you add into this where, where it's all horror motif, it's Halloween, it's Day of the Dead today, Hu Tao Band are coming out. The theme really fits. So I know and it's all kind of rambly. And it's like, what would be the point of that, right? So. I guess now let's project forward a little bit until I, <laughs> what would be the significance of this? So now from a marketing perspective, and now you know you need to sell a product, right? You're the company. You need to sell a product and you need to sell this character. This character is being sold as like a total D-bag, okay? He's a, <laughs> he's a little weasel. He's like kind of shitty. People like his character design. It's really intricate. But his character, he's got almost irredeemable now. They try to redeem child. Came off a little cringe. It's like, hey, babysit my brother. But they're going to have to sell Scaramouche in the future. So what could they do? 
Well, I <laughs> could say he was evil because he didn't have a soul. What if he just popped in a soul? who is like a really good friend of uh, Paimon's and uh, sings really well, fits in with the motif of a singer. We happen to have a soul on our person, on the pinion. Uh, all I gotta do is, I don't know, chuck it at him and then <laughs> magic, poof. Uh, we can get Rue's soul in the body of Scaramouche, redeeming him as he's a whole new person. And now they could sell that banner with no harm, no foul, right? All the stuff he did, forgiven uh and then we could buy it we could spend all our our money on uh you know getting a busted new electro character so yeah there's not a lot backing this all up right uh a lot of it is conjecture but if you think about it right again they're hinting at stuff right they're hinting at uh scaramouche uh right back in the story like coming back in but possibly as like a main antagonist, possibly as a counter to the Petui, right? We don't know, maybe he betrayed them. All I know is that like we're chasing him. We haven't completely left him, right? They're still kind of hinting him out this new event. Um, I, this is another kind of like tangent, right? But he was found in a mansion made by an ascetic warrior. Might've been Hironosuke. So there might be a connection, right? With Scaramouche, maybe being trained by Hironosuke. Maybe some related to this event, which I haven't completed the new event, by the way. So if there's a hint to it, let me know. I might be a day behind. Or maybe I'm just wrong about it. But uh, point is, it does seem like there's some connections here. So what am I predicting, right? So I think what this could hint at is a cameo from Hu Tao, who is uh, on the banner starting now in Asia, today in the UK. And I'm on the North America server. I unfortunately am playing a North America server, even though I am in the UK. Um, so will it happen? I don't know. But it could be, again, a, a story reason why she's on the banner. And it could be a good way to bring her into the story and kind of bring in that theme of death. And again, we have ready, right? We have that redemption ready. Uh, so I don't know, I guess that's kind of my, like, my TED talk about, uh, you know, where I think the story could be going. And, uh, you know, like what might be an important story arc for Hu Tao to come and plug her in and connect kind of like the Lee White characters with the Inazuma characters and potentially make uh, Scaramouche redeemed. So it's a lot out there, but there just seem to be some clear connections and they either seem to be hinting at it to just create some like thematic narrative arcs, but they might be hinting at it uh, on purpose <laughs> just so it doesn't seem like completely out of left field when all of a sudden uh, we make Scaramouche a good guy using this pinion thing, right? It seemed pretty, pretty important that they noted that he's in the soul of this pinion, that he can sing, right? That he has this power of the Thunderbird, that like that Rue is that spirit is real, right? And it also seems important that they're noting that Scaramouche is a like a husk, like a soulless husk, right? Uh, and he's that failed experiment. So we got Raiden, Dr. Frankenstein. We got Scaramouche, the monster. And he's a monster that, you know, will ultimately have a grudge, but he's missing that one ingredient. That's the soul. So, all right, I'm going to end it there. I might have forgotten some stuff. So if, if I did forget, check the comments. I'll see if I had anything there. I am going off my memory. I'm rambling. <laughs> it's not the most concise uh, video I've ever made, but I think I got it all in there. But if I forgot again, check the video or comments and then, uh, like, subscribe, etc. But more importantly, join the Discord because I'm going to be gone for another couple, like, one more, like, week and a half. So if you want to keep in touch, uh, hop in the Discord. I have been keeping in touch in the Discord, been chatting with folks in there. Uh, we're already kind of like debriefing how Tom was doing stuff like that. So if you want to join in, uh, help us like hang out and uh, theory craft and uh, make some co op friends, hop in the Discord. And then uh, thanks everybody for watching. And I'm looking forward to getting back and doing nothing with my life. but play Genshin and be, uh, <laughs> you know, pretty bad at it, but I'm still worse at it on my phone. I can't even clear floor 12 on my phone. By the way, mobile players, your heroes don't know how you do it. It's amazing. Okay. Peace out.